Really? Today we're going to do the ultimate scientific precise test to find out if turning a light bulb on and off makes it burn out faster or not. I've been hearing this story since I was a kid. I enjoyed flicking the light switch on and off repeatedly, and my mom, being a good parent, would reprimand me, warning that the bulb would burn out quicker, that something would malfunction, and we'd have to replace the bulb. This was back in the days of incandescent bulbs, like these here, you know, the ones with that little tungsten filament that heats up and then the bulb lights up. Then, about 20 years later, we started using this type of bulb here, which was the fluorescent bulb. It uses mercury vapor inside and when you put electrical energy in here, those atoms get excited and so on and the bulb lights up. I know this bulb has problems if we turn it on and off too much because there's an electronic system inside that will wear out. But nowadays we don't use either of these two types anymore. We use LED bulbs which also have an electronic part inside but it's simpler than the fluorescent bulb. For today's test I'll measure these two bulbs. The incandescent bulb, which is where this myth came from, is the bulb I used when I was a kid and the LED bulb, which is the one everyone has at home nowadays. And since we want a very precise test to really make sure this happens, I'm not going to keep turning the switch on and off thousands of times to see if the bulb burns out or not. We're going to do something much more thorough. We cut a kind of medium density fiberboard stand with a laser to hold the bulbs. There are two different ones. We're going to assemble it here using super glue and on each level of the stand there will be three lamp sockets which are the supports for us to put the bulbs in. I'm already taking the opportunity to install all the wiring as well. The wiring is a bit complex because I'll have to control these bulbs separately. Since there are two different tests, we had to make two stands. One for the incandescent bulb and another for the LED bulb. But look how beautiful this turned out. Why are we going through all this trouble just to test this thing? The first thing is that all the bulbs are brand new. They've never been turned on. These here are 12 watt LED bulbs and on this side 25 watt incandescent bulbs. In the test the first row will stay on. It's our control. We must determine if a bulb will burn out during testing under normal conditions without switching it on and off. I don't know, after five days if a bulb burns out, maybe it was going to burn out anyway. And we're already putting three bulbs under the same conditions. Because if one bulb has a defect, the others keep working, since it could be a manufacturing problem. Here in the second row, bulbs will turn on for five seconds, then off for five seconds, repeatedly. The third row's time will be one second, alternating on and off. On, off. And all of this happens in both sets at the same time is a never-ending turning on and off of the lamp. You can probably guess what I'm going to use to control this, right? Yes, yes, our friend Arduino. The setup here is pretty simple. It's an Arduino Uno, which is the most common Arduino board. A breadboard, which is this little white board, is used to connect things together. And two solid-state relays that have two outputs. The whole secret is in this thing called a relay. In summary, this small piece contains a switch that can be controlled by the Arduino. On one side, I have its smart control, which communicates with the Arduino. On the other side, there are two switches. This is where I'll make the actual electrical power from the outlet come in and then go out. It's like a wire enters the Arduino and another exits the other side. The Arduino opens or closes this connection. It makes contact or not. In other words, in practice, it turns the lamp on and off. I'll admit I'm feeling lazy about programming all this. I work with Arduino maybe twice a month and forget a lot. So, what should I do? I went to ChatGPT, explained to it what I wanted to do, and it already gave me the ready-made code. To do this, I must learn about Arduino. I connected the wires before programming. I only connected half of them, I'll connect the rest now. One, two, three, and... Go! Just so you have an idea of how much these bulbs are going to be stressed, in this row that blinks more, in one day it will blink 43,200 times. This second row, which turns on for 5 seconds and off for 5 seconds, in one day 8,640 times. If this first row lasts a day, that's already really good. It means you can keep turning this switch on and off as many times as you want and it won't make much difference. But why are we testing this 5 second thing? 
because it might make a difference how long you leave the bulb on and off, because it's one thing for a kid to keep playing and crazily turning the switch on and off. Another thing is when you have a bathroom that a lot of people use, and people go in there, I don't know, every five minutes to do something, and they naturally turn the light on and off. And what we want to understand here is if you turn the light on and off with a bit more time between each action, does that help preserve the bulb a bit more or not? Repeatedly turning it on and off has the same effect. This story presents an additional challenge we haven't discussed. The question now is, will someone stay up all night monitoring these bulbs to see when they burn out? On this side, we're going to leave a camera recording the whole time with a clock in front of it. And that way we'll know the exact time each bulb burned out and then we can do the math. What's your guess? Do you think turning the bulb on and off several times makes it burn out faster or not? When I was a child, they used to say yes, but it wasn't LED, right? It was those incandescent ones. So why did I marry Mary? I said all of that in the video. You did. We're testing LED and incandescent lights. Oh, and then we'll have the tiebreaker. Yeah, but we don't even know if either of them actually works in practice. Do you think it's a myth or not? I don't know. What would you guess? I'd guess it's true for incandescent and fake for LED. In both cases, it burns out earlier. However, you can still turn it on and off many times. In our test, we made the machine do it 43,000 times in a single day. What? In one day, it will turn on 43,000 times. 24 hours? Yeah, it will stay on for 24 hours. It's been almost 24 hours that these lights have been blinking and we left the camera recording so if they stop blinking while we're not here, the camera can catch it. But I just realized a serious math mistake. The camera is taking a picture every 60 seconds. It's a time lapse. But if the picture is being taken at the moment when the light is off, when we watch the video, the light will always look like it's off. When the light burns out, it won't be noticeable in the video since it was already off. To solve this, set an odd time interval instead of an even one like 60 seconds. With an odd interval, it will record alternating hours with the light on and off. That way, when it turns off, it will be noticeable. Let's fix this since we got lucky this time. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. Watching the time lapse is really crazy. You can see that sometimes the light stays on for a while, then it's off for a while, and the clock is spinning like crazy. What I said happened, but because of a lack of synchronization between the Arduino's internal clock and the camera's internal clock, the light doesn't always stay in the same position. It alternates. But let's set it to five seconds. So this won't happen anymore. Let's check in a bit if everything worked out, but I think now it's good. Four days of testing and one light bulb has already burned out. But it was an incandescent bulb that wasn't blinking. It was a bulb from the control group. This incandescent bulb, when it burns out, it's because the filament inside, the little tungsten coil, broke. And we can see here that it's blown. So in fact, it's a burnt out bulb. What's cool about this is that we're doing a very safe test. So there are three control bulbs. Just imagine. First, if we had put this bulb here to blink and only had one bulb blinking, our result would already be wrong because we would think the bulb burned out from blinking so much. However, it only failed due to a manufacturing flaw. If we also only had one control bulb, we would think that the bulb couldn't have stayed on for so long. But we know that's not true since the other two are still working, so let's proceed with the test. Except now with one tungsten control bulb, one of the incandescent ones burned out. I can't believe it's lasting this long.
their warriors. I can't stand this blinking light in the hallway anymore. This has already become a part of Manuel Dumundo's heritage. When visitors come here, we show them the lamp test. It's over. Enough. I can't stand seeing the light blinking anymore. We started this test on April 15th. I thought these lights would burn out after a few days or a week at most of blinking. Do you know today's date? May 8th. Do you have any idea how many times the lights that blink the most have blinked in total? A million times. Yeah, you heard that, right? A million times. Before you say anything, let's agree on something, okay? If you've never seen a YouTube channel blink lights more than a million times, I think that deserves a like, doesn't it? Imagine a frequently used bathroom light bulb. I did some calculations to estimate the usage. A house with four people, each person goes to the bathroom 10 times a day. That light bulb turns on and off 40 times a day. To flick that light a million times, do you know how many years you would have to keep using the bathroom in that house? It's 14,600 times a year. 68 years. For sure the light bulb would burn out before that for some other reason besides flicking on and off. But let's do another calculation. You have a five-year-old son who every day, he's a little rascal, goes to the light bulb and keeps flicking it on and off. He does this a hundred times, okay? Actually, it's 200 times, right? Because once down, to turn it off, once up to turn it on. If he did that every day for the light bulb to be turned on and off a million times, that kid would be 33 years old. So let's agree once and for all, turning this light on and off doesn't make a difference. A million times is way more than enough for us to turn a light bulb on and off. Could using these light bulbs reduce their lifespan, making them last less from now on? Yes, it could be, but we really stress the light bulb a lot. If that made even a little bit of difference, that tiny difference multiplied by a million should have burned out the light bulb. But even though we got a really cool result, because I've never seen anyone do this test, maybe Metro has done it at some point, I'm kind of sad because I wanted to see these light bulbs burn out. I wanted to push them to their limit. So let's do this. I'm going to change this programming here. Maybe making the bulb blink once per second is too little. Actually, it was blinking every two seconds, right? Counting the time it was off. So I'm going to change it. I want this bulb to blink a lot more, to blink like crazy, to blink at the limit of what my eyes can see. The worst part is I didn't save the programming here, so I have to program everything again. I mean, I have to ask ChatGPT to program everything for me again. I'm setting one to blink twice per second and the other to blink five times per second, but I think my eyes can still see it. One, two, three, and ah. <laughs> This one is blinking 10 times per second and this one here is blinking 4 times per second. It's much faster than it was before and it's horrible to keep watching this happen. But I think now we have a higher chance of burning out because we're going to stress everything here a lot more. It's possible that our relay might burn out, right? That's the electronic switch that's controlling this before the bulbs burn out. It's not a very good situation for things to work this way. Maybe we could push it a little more. Maybe the programming allows it, right? Now it looks like it's going to burn out. I don't even know what the camera is showing because this will conflict with the number of times the camera takes pictures per second and maybe you aren't seeing the lights flicker like I am here. But basically these lights at the end are flashing 25 times per second and these here 10 times per second. You can't keep looking at them for too long because it's awful. Let's get out of here. Six days later, some good news and some not so good news. The bad news is that I must have some sensitivity to lights flashing more than 10 times per second because being near this thing is making me feel nauseous. 
walking down that hallway makes me feel increasingly worse. You can tell, right? As I'm talking to you, it's starting to hit me now. The good news is that no lights burned out. These ones here in six days, they blinked five, five million times. That's already a lot, but what about the others? The incandescent and LED bulbs in the middle blinked 5,184,000 times. But the ones on the ends much more. They blinked 12,960,000 times. That's not counting the million they had already blinked before. So 14 million blinks. Mom, I'm sorry to tell you, but you were wrong all along. We could have blinked the light for generations without it burning out from blinking. The test is done, but I'd like to keep it blinking for 30 more years to see how long it lasts. However, we've used enough electricity. I can't take it anymore. How do you turn it off? Enough. One test I really like that we did here is with a bone conduction headphone. It's that kind of headphone that doesn't emit sound. It vibrates and you put it really close to your ear and it can transmit sound by vibrating the bones in your head. 